So basically we're going to take off where we left on my last video. Uh, as per usual, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like what I do, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And tell me if you like this section of videos I'm going to be doing or have started. Me working in care. How I got going. This how I got my driving license. Anyway, back to the point. So on my previous video, you... I told you um, the company I was working with over the water said I'd fallen asleep with your hand. So Hamilton Man asked me to do a statement, which I did do, and they suspended me. Um, uh, I got home and I'm like, I'm done. That's it. I was enjoying the job, to be honest with you, and it was good money. Um, while I was working there, I'd started to take my driving lessons as well. This is something I really wanted to do for working with the company because I knew they had homes all over the UK and I wanted to be a part of that. Loved, you know, travelling to all these places and now as well, I was getting buses and trains to these places and the majority of the time it was hard days or working nights, waking nights. So I was working in the night on a waking night. So I wanted me driving license to be able to get from A to B really easy. Saved me money as well. Public transport, very expensive compared to driving. But I went home after they suspended me and I was thinking, shit, I'm done here. I'm done. That is my care working short. I'm done already. What am I going to do? I hadn't been working for years and then I'd started getting this income and it was like wow I can start to do stuff I was using it to pay for my driving lessons I'd already booked me I'd, I'd done my theory test by then um yeah I'd done my theory test that was sound and I just needed to do my driving lesson I had booked for like another I'd say month in advance and later that evening it was around eight o'clock I uh, got a phone call from Hamilton Man and he said, can you get to Southport now? I said, no. I said, no, I can't. You've suspended me. And they're like, don't worry about that. Don't worry about it. It's it's done. It's just it. So this was like the quickest investigation ever. It only took them less than nine hours. Didn't even get a result off them. I, I know they hadn't even started the investigation. The thing was, they couldn't get anyone to cover this care home. So I'm like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, so quickly sorted myself out, done my bag of tricks. Everywhere I went, I took sandwiches, I took drinks, I took my Xbox. That was the key staple of my equipment, my Xbox. So got in the taxi, went to this place in Southport. I don't know if you know Southport. It's one of the most boringest places in the world this is southport this is how boring southport is we'll click on the map what can we see straight away yeah it's it's just so boring it's unreal and you know what there isn't look at that a british lawnmower museum that's how you know how bad southport is anyway so I've done went to this place, introduced myself, and by the time I got there, majority of the people that was living there were already in bed. There was only a few, and I said, "What do you want me to do? Do I just go in the lounge, sit there, watch television, talk to the residents, introduce yourself?" So I did. Uh, the people that I, I was looking after in this place were a majority of them were autistic and similar disabilities, but more severe than what I've got myself. Um, so yeah, nice conversation with them. Very, not too, not a very educated conversation, but how are you, what you're watching, what's going on? Let me know. But I was doing a wake and night there. Eventually they all went to bed. I was doing a wake and night with another lady that worked in this home full time. She didn't work for the agency. She was working straight for them. Anyway, about midnight, she walks off, I think not an of it. Um, there was two TVs, one in the front, one in the back room, even though they were both connected. So I had my Xbox set up on one of these TVs. She comes in with two quilts and pillows. 
and she throws one on the couch I was sitting on. She went, there's a blanket for when you go to sleep. I said, oh no, this is a wake at night. I thought to myself, I said, these are trying to kid me here. These are trying to kid me. These want me to go to sleep. These are setting me up to fail. They've had a call of Hamilton man saying, we think he's done this, but he, you know, he's telling us he's not. Get him to prove us, you know, right. Get him to fall asleep. So that night, um, I was convinced, convinced I was going to stay up. Now, bear in mind, I don't know sleep through the day. Um, and I was like, I'm going to force myself, I'm going to force myself to stay awake. So fair enough. Um, about half an hour after she got these blankets, all he heard was... was it she was fast asleep she was dead to the world and i was like sound sound now she's gonna sleep i can get to sleep so um we have these um like security badges so i'm gonna use this as an example this is my hard drive it was about this thick big blue thing and you had it on your chest and it was connected to the doors in the house so the doors where the residents were sleeping it was connected to their doors so if they come out in the night time it just get and it'd start vibrating big fat vibrating noise and feel so i slept like that with it next to me head on the cushion so if it went off it fucking shake through my head and it'd wake me up so i'd be like straight up on the ball yeah i wasn't asleep um this care home it was it was an okay care home i actually didn't mind working in it um uh, i preferred the waking nights compared to the days now there was two people that lived there in particular uh, there were two two fellas and uh, they were basically who I was looking at not at the same time on individual occasions so one day I'd be with one the next day I'd be with the other and I didn't mind I got to know them they, I didn't like them I, I'll be a hundred percent honest I didn't like these lads um, nothing to do with them and the disabilities what they had they were just creepy they were really, really creepy. And one of them, there was this fat one. Um, how can I say it without getting this video demonetized? It was very much, uh, it was very much similar to Jim Fixer. That's all I'll say. But because he was autistic, he didn't get arrested. Oh, really, he got arrested, but he never went to prison for it. They decided to put him in a care home as well. Now, an insight in which it, what I used to do with him. So we used to go shopping. We went to cinemas. He got a bunch of money off the government. He got benefits for being in this care home. He had Sky in his room. This is no word of a lie. He had Sky in his room, which he used to pay out of his own money. Uh, to my knowledge, what I got told, he had Sky in his room. Not with your basic channels, but with your more adult content. If you catch me drift. So, this fella, who was similar to Jimmy Savile, got to have adult channels. Does this make sense to anyone? It didn't to me. It really didn't. But these were the sorts of people we were looking after. Um, the other lad he was a bit more younger it, same again benefits he had all he had a top of the range laptop that he used to just go on to google with um he had a bow stereo sister if anyone touched it there was murder but he'd carry it around the house with him that used to wind me up something rootless so he'd carry carry these speakers around the house put them down and there must have been about 20 other people in this house. And if anyone touched it, he's at the roof, he's having a fit. And I was thinking, why are they encouraging him to bring these speakers down? Because 
They're making a run for their own back because he's going to kick off because someone's going to touch it. And that's how it works. Anyway, I worked there for a good month. Um, yeah, in between, I did do a couple of other shifts in other places. But in this particular place, I was there for a, a good month and a half. About three weeks into my stint here. Yeah. No, it was longer than that. I, I worked there longer than a month. It must have been closer to two months. So a good month into my stint here. Yeah. I had my driving test and went past my driving test. I'm a driver. That was on a Friday. I can remember the exact day it happened. So I passed my test. I had £400 in my pocket after all my bills. What I had left in my weekly wage, £400. And I was like, yes, I'm going to buy a car. And I bought an Astra, a red Astra that was an Oh, Reg, if I can remember rightly. It was owned by an old gentleman beforehand. And uh, the insurance was more than the car. My insurance was like £2,500 a year. But I was made up at this car. It didn't have cruise control. It was petrol. I look back at it and I'm thinking, oh, my word, how did I cope with that? Um, the day I got it, I'm straight driving to work driving to work because i can remember it was the day bear in mind it was the day i passed my test driving up home scare road on home scare road there's like a little island verge in the middle separating both sides of the road and then all of a sudden a car just comes right in front of me from the other sides of the road misses me by i'd say six inches and crashes into the field across from me and my bum was like that, being in mind, I'd just passed my test and I'm like, what the friggin' hell have I got myself into here? Anyway, enough of the driving now, that's not important. So, drive, drive to work, fantastic, made up with myself. I probably spend about another three, four weeks here. I'm doing more day shifts now in this place. More day shifts, um, looking after more kinds of people. Um, taking them to, you know, a majority of my time was taking them to the corner shop for bags of sweets. Um, but it didn't bother me. Uh, kitchen time, I we used to do the dishes as well. The care staff used to do the dishes in here. And one day there was this, um, no, um, this black gentleman who was in there, severely autistic. We didn't like them coming into the kitchen unless they were helping, unless they were invited. We didn't really like them coming into the kitchen. Anyway, I'm there. I'm trying to do the dishes. He comes in and say, come on, mate, let's go. Out the kitchen, out the kitchen while I do the dishes. Anyway, he picks up a plate, just picks up this plate and he goes, and he licks this plate. And I go, oh, come on, you dirty bugger. Get out the kitchen. Let's get these dishes cleaned. Didn't say it in a nasty way. But that didn't matter. I still said it. I said it. Uh, another lady overheard it. She was working for the agency as well. And what does she do? Instead of coming to me and discussing it. Now, bear in mind, I'd only been in care a couple of months. Instead of coming and discussing it to me, she gets in touch with the management of the home and tells the management, instead of saying to me, Joe, you shouldn't be speaking like that to them, even though it was no malice involved in it, none at all. Uh, you know, I said it in a soft tone voice. Um, it's more like a Liverpool slangy way, um, the way I used it. But no, anyway, that was me done in that one as well. I get pulled into the office again. Do you go, fucking now, Joe, what have you done? Why have you done this? Why did you say it? And I told him, I said, it wasn't in a nasty way. It really genuinely wasn't. So that's, to my knowledge, I'm done in care. And I'm like, God, no. I've done it again. I cocked myself up. I've got no one else to blame. It's me. It's the way I am. But I've got no one else to blame. And I'm like, okay. And he says again, we're going to have to suspend you. And I'm like, yeah, I thought that'd be the case. Don't worry about it. And I'm gone. 
So that was my story on working in the care home in Southport. Uh, if you like what I do, please give me a thumbs up. If you want any more advice on working in care, please let me know. I was there for a good five, six years. It doesn't seem like a long time. But the stuff, as we get closer, as we get more in-depth into my journey through care, you'll realise I learnt a lot. It changed the way I thought about care. But, like I said, if you like what I do, give us a thumbs up. If you like my videos, please subscribe. Um, also, any donations that I get on the thank you tab on the bottom, they go to improve my videos. If it's not buying mics and new cameras, it's upgrading my PC. But it's not just that, I promise you. It's also to make more content. It's funny as this sounds the more you have the better content you can make but that's this video done for today once again thank you for watching see you again soon